may we say the function of a rational health care system is to provide quality care to all the others. And what I'm put, putting forward is, is simply a different approach. Buttigieg claiming a significant lead over Senators Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and former Vice President Joe. It is critical that everyone in this country be held to the same standard, and that is no one is above the law, not even the President of the United States. Welcome to Roundtable Decision. I'm your host, Wyatt Birkenoff. And for today's video, we're going to quickly talk about the Democratic debates tonight, as they have not started yet, so it's going to be an introduction to what we might expect for the 10 Democratic candidates for today's debate. And of course, you have your four leading candidates, and this is the article of The Hill, what I'm going to briefly mention. And your four candidates are Joe Biden, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, and Bernie Sanders. Those are the top four. And as we're going to see multiple times throughout these several articles I'm using, Pete Buttigieg has risen in the polls quite significantly. And he's going to be a target or a supposed target for many of the candidates within the debates through his rising numbers of Democratic votes. But the other six are Kamala Harris, which a quick note of Kamala Harris is that at one point she was a leading candidate, and I have quotations there, But and she even stated in an earlier debate, I believe it was the first debate, that she was a leading candidate, and essentially that she had... Uh, she wasn't somebody you should target because of it, essentially. Then you have Amy Klobuchar, Cory Booker, Andrew Yang, Tulsi Gabbard, and the newest candidate, which is a billionaire, which needs to be noted for obvious reasons, is Tom Stoyer. But The Hill brings up several questions about what we might expect or what we might see in this Democratic debate. And one of their questions they bring up is, can Warren cure concerns about her candidacy? And in particular, they talk about this, and I'm reading from the article. Warren's months-long rise to the top of the polls has seen its share of setbacks in recent weeks. Her rivals have repeatedly raised questions about how she plans to finance her proposed medical care for all. And Biden has attacked the Massachusetts senator as an elitist with a may way or the high with <laughs> with my way or the highway approach to politics. And as the Hill states in the second article, or the second paragraph, excuse me, is that she has been losing or slipping in some of the more recent polls because of her proposed plan. And a brief mention, even though I'm not really going to talk about it in today's video, and I might talk about it in the future, is Warren has come out with how she plans to finance it, but she hasn't really came out with anything new in how she plans to finance. She more just repeats the point she said in Democratic debates, that she wants to tax the 1% a lot, 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 lot more in order to pay, to pay for the rest of us, the rest of us being the middle class, and money for Medicare for all, similar Medicare for all, similar to what Canada and Britain and those type of healthcare systems deal with. The next question, which we're going to see in several of the articles, as I mentioned, is will the rivals, as in other candidates, go after Buttigieg? Because as I've said, he has been rising in certain certain polls. And one of the biggest notes was that his surge in Iowa, with the most recent poll in the Iowa uh, caucus being a huge reason, and one of the earlier um, states will get to have a vote in for who might be the leader in the Democratic Party and who might face off against Trump. And But another quick note about Buttigieg is that in South Carolina, which has an increasingly large black our black population, he has not been gaining a lot of votes between the black voters. And this can become a huge problem for Pete Buttigieg to win a Democratic seat or win a Democratic spot against Trump if he can't win the Democratic vote. As I've read in several places that the, uh, the Democrats' black vote make up about 20% of the overall vote, which doesn't sound like a huge amount, but that 20% can be a matter of winning or losing. And if you do not gain 
that black vote, a lot of people argue that Pete Buttigieg is not going to be able to win or go much farther in the debates. And I'm going to quickly mention uh, Pete Buttigieg and his problems with getting the black vote at the end of the video, and I'll have a timestamp if you want to jump straight to that point, but I'll continue with this article and several other articles. The next point is, will moderators have their moment? So, obviously, a lot of the moderators so far in the debates have had certain questions that have been brought up in media, either by the stupidity of the question, what some people think, or just in general of their questions seeming rather uh, targeted towards like a certain race, like with the Hispanic uh, moderator in the last debate. But the moderators for this one are all women's, are all women, so the questions might come up with uh, with abortion or more women's rights and things like that, uh, and will that happen? Uh, obviously, I don't know if that's a real big point to watch out for, but for some people might want to see what the moderators would be like for this debate. And the biggest point, what I thought, was their fourth one. Do the progressives fight back? So Warren and Bernie have seemed to ally, be allied together so far in the debates, which is rather interesting because they're going for the same progressive voters. The people who are far left are voting for Warren and Sanders. And Sanders, obviously, in the last presidential election, got a lot of the progressive votes compared to Hillary Clinton. But that's besides the point. So they have allied together in one strong stance, and I have that in quotations, for the progressive vote. But if they want to go on and want to be the candidate against Trump, they're going to have to fight against each other. And will that happen? And I do think that they'll need to fight against each other to win. But they could be approaching um, an alliance for more further along because there's still 10 candidates. And I think that they both feel strong enough that they're going to gain followers and gain polls in order to advance. So I don't think that they're too concerned with getting themselves knocked out of the race this early. And they might still be allies in order to both advance rather than just one crushing the other. Even though I'm not sure if one were to attack each other that they would get crushed in the debate. But that's for a whole different discussion. Do the 2020 newcomers weigh on the debate? So obviously you have your uh, Tom Sawyer who is new to the race and is a multi-billionaire. And you have your other low polling candidates like Andrew Yang and Tulsi Gabbard and, and uh, Amy Klobuchar. Will they have a chance to really shine out in the debate? And I don't think if they're really focused on those type of candidates because I don't see any one of those candidates gaining enough uh, polling action and enough polling rise from where they are now to advance. So I think that they're going to be largely overshadowed in debate. Will they have their moments? Probably yes, because they need these viral moments in order to advance. But you cannot cannot take the better viral moment approach with doing something completely outrageous as you wanted to do with gun legislation in order to potentially rise in the polls because you're seen as being rather a retard. Or <laughs> retards may be a little harsh word, but you're seen as being rather uh, not educated with the issue. So going to CNN's questions, they have Beauty Judge turn on the spotlight. So when they obviously talk about his poll and his rising in that action, and that it's his chance to shine. This is his debate to win or lose, as a lot of people and what they're discussing. And I do tend to agree with that, because if he's able to gain the action of voters and really shine out as the candidate, it could potentially be huge. Because as I mentioned before, Sanders and Warren seem to be allied together. So if they maintain allies and Beauty Judge goes against them and really comes out as the shining star, he could be looked at as the favorite because the other two biggest leaders in the Democratic Party are more kind of seen as one person rather than two people. And they have their second person of being Obama. So seeing him as has said that whoever Obama endorses in the debate in the debate, and he hasn't endorsed anyone yet, could see a large, large, large rise in how many people will actually vote for them. Because Obama, for a lot of Democratic voters, is kind of seen as a huge political sway or a huge person that they admire. Is in 
in the debate, so whoever he endorses could make a huge impact into what happens in the future. And I'm not sure if that really has a huge action for the average Democratic voter and who Obama supports, but I do think that Obama has a large following. So if you were to endorse a Pete Buttigieg or a Tulsi Gabbard, which I don't see happening, but one of the lesser middle type of Democratic candidates, they could see a rise to overcome a Warren or a Bernie if the polls suggest that that was what might happen. So again, Obama could have an influence, but I don't really see that being a big issue. Next point is Biden's Southern firewall is tested. And I'll read some of the article here. Biden has wobbled in Iowa and New Hampshire as Buttigieg and Warren have surged. And his campaign is bayoued by his strong support from black voters in South Carolina, something that no other candidate has been able to crack. African American voters are crucial in the Democratic nominating contest, especially in South Carolina, the last of the four first states to vote. And I am and I am states that vote in March. Increasingly, the reality that his views have to find a way to cause Biden's southern firewall to crumble is becoming clear. So it just talks about will we be able to maintain his stronghold on the South, so to speak, and especially with the black voters. And obviously, I don't know if if, if that's going to change much because I do think that the average black voter seems to be rather a Joe Biden supporter rather than a Bernie or Elizabeth Warren supporter. And obviously, as we've seen, Pete Buttigieg is not getting supported much by the black voters. Then they talk about the Medicare for All flight takes a twist. So obviously they've discussed a lot about this Medicare for All, Medicare for All, and Warren seems to be getting attacked rather heavily for her stance on it and when not releasing a plan. But as I've stated earlier, Warren has released a plan, and this plan is said a lot of uh, has basically repeated a lot of what she said and again I've said that in this video already and I might make a video on the plan in particular in case if anyone is interested because I'm rather interested into learning more about the plan in 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 a bigger detail and but from what I've known that is so far and even many Democrats have came out against Warren's plan because she really hasn't changed anything and really hasn't supported a full layout for how she hopes to get the get enough money to support this plan because it is going to cost a ton of money if Medicare for all Medicare for all were to be supported. The biggest thing is what I think and obviously a lot of these questions have repeated itself but I'm only going to talk about two more with this question and another question. And then I'm going to move on to the end part of the video and why Pete Buttigieg isn't really getting many of the black supporters or black votes. And it's only really one issue, so it'll be rather quick. But again, focusing back on the questions. Will Sanders take on Warren? And I'll read of what some of CNN thinks. Tough Sanders has been extraordinarily careful not to attack Warren. He could also use the debate in Warren's recent discussion to break up Medicare for All into a two legislative steps as a reminder to supporters of the policy that he is the only candidate promising to push forward and then it's entirely at the beginning of his presidency. Sanders could also seize on the Biden's campaign dropped opposition to the formation of a super PAC. Sanders has been rallied against money in politics. And now that the former vice president is being bolstered by super PACs, Sanders could return to his 2016 heir. So again, that kind of just talks about CNN gave a new perspective. I really hadn't thought about to read the article about that Sanders could attack Sanders. Sorry, <laughs> Bernie Sanders could attack Warren on their plan in particular for what it has said in its legislation of the plan itself which is a rather interesting approach because they do seem to be rather allied with each other than going against each other. And if you, in my opinion, I do think that Sanders might question Warren over certain parts of her plan, but I don't think that it's going to be a full-blown attack. I do think that they're taking this allied approach a few more debates further. 
The biggest point is I think Kamala Harris looks for a way out of the woods. So Kamala Harris at one point was a strong candidate, especially during the first two debates, even though I don't really think that she gained enough votes to be a super strong candidate, as Warren and Sanders and Joe have been so far in the race. But she has been losing in these most recent debates and has really dropped in polling and has kind of become one of the middle ground to low tier Democratic candidates. So will she be able to, in this debate, reach out to her voters more and become more of a top tier candidate or at least more of a upper middle tier candidate than what she was before the debate has started? And I think that... In order for Kamala to do this, she needs to be not be herself, which sounds weird. But Kamala in her debate so far has had lines of funniness or attempted funniness that I don't think is coming across to many of the voters and many of the people who watch the TV and not even to many of the people in the live crowd. As in several moments, she is almost forced clapping or forced laughter within the debates from the crowd. And it doesn't really come across as natural. And especially on watching on TV, it comes across as being rather forced. And I don't think that that is helping Kamala Harris and her voters and people who want Kamala Harris to go farther. So I think she needs to stop doing some of that pandering laughter that she attempts to do and more focus on what she wants to do as a president if she wants to gain back voters. But real quick, I wanted to talk about Pete Buttigieg and why he hasn't been able to gain many of the black voters in his debate, in his his presidential campaign. So in a large part, I do think that it comes up to his plan and what he does and his new plan of uh, the Frederick Douglass plan or the Douglass plan is what he's calling it. And real quick, those who don't know who Frederick Douglass was, is he is a, basically, I'll just read from here. Uh, Frederick Douglass was a leader in the abolitionist movement and early champion of women's rights and author of Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass. And he was an escaped slave as well. And he was during a civil war and he was a prominent African-American abolitionist, as I've stated earlier. But the biggest thing was that he escaped and led a movement to end slavery as he was a former slave himself, which is a big thing. So Frederick Douglass is huge within the African American and within the history as a whole movement. And so he, Billy Judge has named his plan the Douglass Plan, and it seeks to combat racial inequality by focusing on reforming healthcare, education, entrepreneurship, criminal justice, and voting rights on a federal level per a release from his campaign. And this is reading from the CNN article. The new details of the plan Buttigieg has opposed, increasing federal funding are for historically black colleges and universities, increasing investments in minority-held dispositories and mandating 25% of the government contracts to go to minority-owned businesses. The plan would also seek to reduce interaction inter- in creation excuse me, by 50% of the state and federal level and abolish fri- private federal prisons for a release from the Peter Judge complaint. So obviously this has been huge because of his most recent poll as I've suggested many times that he has gained 0% of the black voters nationally which is huge and astonishing that he's only been able to do that so this debate in this stage he really needs to stress that moment but I could see Pete Buttigieg falling into the grave because if he comes across as being pandering to the black voters or to the black community by trying to persuade them to get his votes he could, he could lose many of the moderate voters that he has had to rise up in the polls. So it becomes a, a, um, a swing of some sorts. And if he tries to do this, he'll go down. And if he does that, he'll go up, theoretically. And this has become a huge issue. And I'm going to make a, de- a detailed video over the, the Douglas plan and what the black voters ha- think about it for Pete Buttigieg and why he hasn't really 
gained many voters through this plan that he recently released. Because in general, many p black voters seem to be against his Douglas plan and see it as being rather a pandering plan that doesn't really have a backbone to survive through legislation if he were to become a president. So I hope you liked this video and I tried out a different type of video through one of um, more of a outlined video through a scripted video and I also tried to make it more of like a live stream content because I'm going to be trying live streams in the future. I hope to have everything fixed and everything to be done for having live streams hopefully next month as I get some more tech to make it sound a little better and a little more higher quality for the fans and supporters of my channel. But in general, I just hope you liked this video and I hope you will come back for more.